you positive heads. Welcome to a very special episode dedicated to none other than you, the pea heads themselves. I am your pea head enthusiast and hostess for the day, Alexa Hauser. I have been blessed to have the experience of helping out with Positive Head social media for the better part of a year. And through my digital interactions, I began to realize, as did Brandon, that we have some incredible beings listening to the show who are taking the information that Brandon puts out through the podcast and using it to transform their lives and create wonderful things. You listeners are all a huge, huge part of the life force that propels this show forward through time and space, and we think it's time to bring forth some of you beautiful reflections and delve a little deeper into this collection of energy that is the Positive Head community. So as we shine the spotlight on our listeners, what we'll have them do is share their stories of how they attracted Positive Head into their life, the transformation it's facilitated for them, and what they're focused on creating now that they're in a more positive headspace. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash Positive Head. Check it out. Hello, all you positive heads. On this week's P-Head Posse episode, our guest is positive head listener Marley Fuller. Marley is an intuitive Reiki healer and meditation teacher who currently works as a positivity coach, helping leaders manage their self-talk and behavior in order to create a better experience for their employees and customers. Her calling is to heal and help awaken corporate America and is doing so one workshop at a time through her consulting business, Fuller Methods. She and her husband, Brandon, are the parents of three boys who they practice conscious parenting with in order to gain the wisdom their children have brought for them in this lifetime. Hi, Marley. Welcome to the show. Hi, Alexa. Thank you. That was so beautiful. (laughs) Well, thank you. You helped me with it. (laughs) (laughs) And it was a very beautiful description um, because it shows just how much you have going on. I'm so excited to talk to you about all this stuff. Likewise. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Well, why don't you... Tell us a little bit about yourself, about, you know, maybe your story and and how you eventually came to find the podcast. Oh, yes. Well, it all goes back to a series of beautiful synchronicities. And, you know, we pee heads love our synchronicities. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we do. Last January, I was on a full moon shamanic journey and received a message that I was to go to India to become a meditation teacher in order to help me with what I was doing in my positivity coaching. And so my husband and I, we have this way that we live our life. We follow the excitement. We listen to our hearts and we don't question things. We um, trust in the universe and don't let the mind get involved because it usually tends to just muddy things. And so after I received that message, I find a master, I enroll in his course and book a flight to India all in 48 hours. (laughs) And so... (laughs) When things kind of settled in, I had a little bit of fear that started coming up and some anxiety around traveling to India as a female alone for the first time and decided to meditate on it. And when I reached my meditative state, I hear this whisper, Rasha. And I go, huh, Rasha? Like Rasha Shana? And I, <laughs> I hear them say again, Rasha. I'm like, okay, when I come out of meditation, I've got to look this up. Maybe it means something. Maybe it's an Indian word or something. And so I look up this word Rasha and what do I find? But Rasha, the author of the book Oneness. And not only is this a guide on transcendence, but also this woman lives in India. And you just have to laugh at these 
synchronicities, these coincidences are just too good to be true. And yeah. there on her website, of course, is a Gmail address. So I decided to reach out to her. I think my subject line was, I can't believe you exist. And I explained how I <laughs> her. Yeah. And she actually wrote back almost immediately. And she's like, yes, I exist. And she gave me all of these great tips and advice on uh, traveling to India and really gave me the confidence I needed to go there alone. So much confidence, actually, that I shared a taxi with a man in Rishikesh, which you're not supposed to do <laughs> as a female traveler. And wow. he was actually there to see Muji. Um, and I had never heard of Muji at the time. He tells me all about him and says that, you know, this is, he's finally arrived. This is what he's always been looking for in his spiritual journey was Muji and everything makes sense now. And I remember thinking, I want that. And um, I actually was able to see Muji while I was there and did not have the same experience, unfortunately. <laughs> So fast forward six months later, my husband and I had followed another message from our hearts and we bought a farm in South Carolina with 50 acres, a fixer upper away from all of our friends, our family. I was pregnant with our third son and I was kind of feeling down. We hadn't started on the renovations yet. The house was kind of yucky and my photography was just sitting in corners gathering dust and we hadn't decorated anything. And one of my soul sisters was coming down to visit. And when she saw the state we were living in, she was really just appalled. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> instead of going to Asheville to tour the Biltmore like we'd originally planned, she chose to give us her gift of interior design and her time and energy to create a space for us that we were happier living in. And so this Saturday morning, we're getting ready to work. And she goes, I know what you need. I'm going to introduce you to my favorite podcast. It's really upbeat and positive. You're going to love it. It's exactly what you need. She says it's called The Positive Head. And so I'm open. She turns it on. And I hear the song. And I hear Brandon's beautiful, cheerful, healing voice. And what is he doing that morning but reading from the book Oneness? And it was like, boom, the lights came on, everything came together wow. and, and I was hooked. So I've been a loyal listener ever since. And the more I heal from all of the lessons that everyone has provided, um, suddenly I realized I had my Muji moment. This was it. I have found my community that I've been looking for. So I'm so grateful. <laughs> Wow. Way to bring that full circle there. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> that is great. I was just thinking to myself while you were talking, I was like, wow, you're such a good storyteller. Like, I just love listening to you tell stories. Uh, I love you too. Um, <laughs> so wait, first of all, the Rasha thing, when you first said that, I was like, wait, she's alive? I definitely did not think she's alive. She is. And hi, Rasha, if you're listening, I told her all about the, the Positive Head podcast. Oh my gosh, Rasha, if you're listening, wow. Yeah, because it's, you know, that, that book has been such a big part of the show. And like, um, I mean, for me, especially like all of those chapters have just been so, you know, influential for me. So it's just so amazing that you had contact with her and that she was like, guiding you that's just incredible um it is, yes. <laughs> and well so rewind a little bit maybe even before that were you always um you know so intuitive or on this path or what led you to kind of like the spiritual path um always yes so <laughs> I even remember um, being a young girl and talking about how connected I was to the flowers. And my parents always saying, did you hear that? Did you hear what she's saying? And always calling me an old soul. And so that got me really curious at a young age. Like, what does this mean? What does it mean that I'm an old soul? And what does it mean that I, I just have this knowing of things that are happening or coming? And I'm the most unusual empath that you'll ever meet. So I, I have those empath experiences, but I'm very outgoing and loving and, and um, up in your face. <laughs> like most of them yeah. weren't. And I think that's because I've really how healing that can be for other people. And I appreciate the feeling that I get from them um, in those moments. So um, the spiritual path, my mom gave me a Deepak Chopra book when I was 17 years old. And that kind of helped with my awareness and continue to unfold. And I really didn't have my first awakening, um, that Kundalini experience until I was 30 years old and had my first Reiki session. Mm. Uh -huh. So you've had a Kundalini awakening. 
Yes. And more so in India, they just continue to unfold um, the more work I do. Um, Things that I've learned from this podcast have helped with that. And I think I've started to scare people a little just talking about like, oh, I know this and here's what's going to happen here. And that friend that I mentioned who um, was coming down, we actually made it to Asheville uh, about a month ago. And, um, and on the way there, I thought, I'm going to meet your husband when we're in Asheville. And we go to Asheville Music Hall, he walks in the door. And I'm like, Oh, there he is. I introduced myself, I introduced them. And they've been (laughs) together ever since he's planning to move back to Richmond to live with her. I mean, it just it's so beautiful. Wow. So you've always like been this in like, so yeah, like this has been a big part of your life always. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So that's really, it's really interesting. It's especially interesting to think about it because of what you do now with, with your um, job with the American Red Cross. Can you talk about that a bit? Yes, definitely. So um, just thinking about my corporate experience altogether, I um, started climbing the ladder, that corporate ladder, as soon as I graduated college and um reached the top for one organization I was working with in senior management, but was really sick all the time. I mean, I just had these migraines that I had to get MRIs for, these stomach aches that I was having endoscopies for, and um, just never really felt good. was on anxiety medication. And um, what do you do when you feel like you're being pushed in this box, but go even further? And so I um, enrolled in business school to get my MBA. And it wasn't until then, this was around the same time that I um, had that Reiki treatment with the awakening. Um, And I had one of my professors, Dr. Tom Epperson of the Inner Will, um, talk about authenticity. And it was like, wait a minute, I can be myself in this corporate workplace. I don't have to be pushed into this box. And so I created Fuller Methods um, to help heal and awaken corporate America uh, was my mission. And I'm not kidding you. As soon as I created my website and, and started networking, the American Red Cross has this role for me that they want me to help coach their leaders to provide a better experience for their employees and customers. And my husband just laughed. He's like, you're such a manifester. He's like, you realize you just created this, right? (laughs) (laughs) And so I travel around teaching workshops, um, helping people manage their stress, um, help them recognize that they are in charge of their experience. And it's all about their attitude and the labels that they put on it. And um, many of that has come from lessons that I'm learning again on this podcast. So a lot of Chris Jackson episodes, I'm like, Ooh, let me write that one down about communication. You know, I need Mm. to share this with my people. (laughs) Yeah. Well that, you know, that, that is my question though. How do you, because the way we talk here, like on the podcast in this group is, you know, super open and, 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 you know, mystical and, and kind of, it just seems like, how do you take that and translate it to corporate America? Like, how are you actually, yeah, translating that for them? Mm -hmm. Um, So part of it is just my own intention of I'm going to make it okay to not only use the word love, but the action love in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So that's an intention that I always set before I lead these workshops. And I really have to feel the room out to know how woo-woo I can get. Some workshops we end up talking about chakras and energy centers, and we can get really deep into that stuff. Others are are more surface level of, oh, I had no idea that it was me being the victim in that situation. And we talk about, you know, victim mentalities versus victor mentalities and what that looks like and how to not label your feelings and put all these thoughts to them and think that that's your true experience. So it's just a blend. And again, using the my intuitiveness and my own empath experiences to know how deep I can go with each group. Mm. Do you ever get pushback? Sometimes. Um, And what I've started to be able to say is um, if you're feeling that pushback, this is a trigger for you. And let's dig deeper into that. Why do you think that this is triggering you? And I've had people have breakthroughs right there in the workshop, or I've had people who maybe don't want to do it so publicly, and they've reached out to me afterward, and we've been able to work together to help them overcome some of those issues and that pushback that they're feeling. Mm. So overall, is it, does it seem like progress is being made there? Because, you know, that's an area I don't think a lot of us are really able to see or, uh, 
just understand like what's going on there because we're all kind of so in this world right now right. is is are you seeing movement like are you seeing progress or um, yes so originally so they wanted this to provide a better experience for blood donors uh, and for employees and measurement comes from satisfaction surveys but then if you look at the areas where I've been working at their level of engagement, um, their turnover levels, how they've gone down, safety is improving, quality is improving. There's all these other, you know, business wow. metrics that you can tie directly back to how these leaders are overcoming their ego in a way to be able to provide a, a loving experience for their employees. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's amazing to hear. I like when I when you first told me about the position, I was like I had no idea that that was even a thing or happening, and I guess you didn't either until it was created by you for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you see like them opening up more positions like this or this being like um something that continues to expand there? Um, it's hard to say. I, I hope so. I think that that's definitely something that I'm rooting for. Yeah. Why, why corporate America, just out of curiosity, why is it, it, why is like your fascination corporate America specifically with this education and healing? Yeah. Um, probably because I've spent 15 years of my life in corporate America already. I'm 35 years old and it's, it's been a big part of my life and what I've seen. And I've just, I've seen the way that people feel like they can't be themselves and the pain that they put themselves through that's directly related to stress. And again, that box that they're trying to put themselves in. And it's just a calling that, okay, I, I dug myself out of this hall of this hole, I was able to wake up, and I want to help others too. And corporate America, it's such a big part of our nation. And imagine, you know, how the world would change if we could get everyone to this place, to this space of lovingness. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what yeah, it just in in my mind, it's like it, it, it's like when I imagine this happening, or if I imagine myself going into corporate America and having these conversations, I just imagine like they're it not even getting through. Like, and so it's so fascinating to me, and it you're obviously perfect for this role um, because you see the way, like you are seeing the space in which these things can come together and blend and you're being the bridge basically. So yeah, that's like fascinating to me. Cause that to, to me, corporate America is like the hardest place to penetrate with this, this knowledge right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's part of the challenge that I like too. It's like, Ooh, this is yeah. a good thing. <laughs> let's do, let's dig our teeth in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what, what else like, would you like to do? Like, where else would you like to bring me this education or these workshops? Like, do you have any ideas or I don't know. I just feel like, <laughs> do you have any, um, like plans to expand this at all? Or like, especially with your own consulting company, is that strictly, is that what you're doing with American Red Cross or is that something you use with like other opportunities? Yeah. So I, I, um, when I started this, I was almost at that fork in the road, like, well, do I give all of my time and energy to the Red Cross or do I take this leap over here and start with these, um, few clients that I've built and, and just again, trust in the universe. And I talked to a mentor of mine and he gave me some great guidance and he said, you know, it's such a prestigious organization and you've got a lot of, um, impact that you can make in a short amount of time. So take this time to test it out, test your theory and prove that it works. And so I've been able to do that. And so now as I'm having these conversations with people in other industries, I'm being invited to host these workshops for them. Um, so I think that's how it's going to expand naturally. I'm, I'm not forcing anything. And, um, you know, during my meditations, the messages that I receive are everything will come to you as it's supposed to. So um, mm. I am I am open and available and um, ready to share the love. Mm, that's awesome. So what is one thing that you think would benefit every P head to know or understand as they continue on their own journey? 
Mm. Well, for me, um, meditation has been such an elevator for what I'm able to experience. And um, so I encourage people to meditate. Don't be scared of the word or of sitting still. There's so many different types of meditation. Um, On my 35th birthday, I did a 35 day meditation challenge um, that's on fullermethods.com. If anybody wants to go and read about all the different types of meditation and many of them are five minutes or less because, you know, I've got that corporate mindset of how can I give people um, big results in a short amount of time. (laughs) And, Mm. um, One of the messages that I received when I was in India, um, and, you know, we were doing 12 hours a day in some cases. So this is toward the end where the messages were just coming in constantly. And, um, And I heard, give the world your smile. It may not deserve it, but it needs it. And so that's a lesson that my family lives by. My young boys, they know what to do. And even when people aren't open to receiving it, they need it. And we see how healing it can be for them just to grab somebody's eye contact, give them a smile, maybe even add a little hello and stop living in fear. Somebody's not going to ask you for something. If you look them in the eye and smile at them, they're not going to try to take advantage of you. And I think many people live in that place of fear. So um, definitely meditate and, and again, give the world your smile and experience how healing it can be for them and for you. I love that so much because that is the smile thing is something I've discovered as well is it's like almost a daily exercise that I try to uh, practice where um, because I walk dogs a lot and I, I get like I work from home and I get to be outside a lot and there's all these parks around and lots of people around and it's something that I consciously started doing um, like a couple of months ago where I started make it's a practice. Like every time I see someone, I could put my head down and I could, you know, pick up, take out my phone and look busy or I could put my phone away or leave my phone inside and actually be like, Hey, how are you? And smile at them. And it's so interesting. Like when I'm really on my game, I'll get people who look like they are having the worst day of their life to smile. And they almost seem surprised that they're smiling. Like, oh, I don't even know I'm doing this, but like she's so for a minute. (laughs) Yeah. And you're right. Like it really is the most healing thing, not only for, I mean, for both people, for other people and yourself, if you're really genuine and just truly want to give someone your smile, and truly want to just be like, hey, I see you. It's like that exactly what you said. It wakes someone up. It makes them feel like it can change their whole day. It seems so small, but I've just recognized it can really change their whole day. And it changes my, it gives me so much vitality just doing that and connecting with people. So um, yeah, I second that one. But let's talk about meditation for a second, because this is like the big one. Like this is the big, I mean, I don't want to call it big because I don't want to make it more intimidating, but it just (laughs) seems like it's the key, you know, for, for what we're all looking for. But it also seems like everyone's still kind of confused on why they're doing it and how to do it best for them. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any, how do you see that? How do you see, what do you see? What do you think is the purpose of meditation and what do you think is the best way for someone who's having trouble to meditate? Well, for me, my purpose is to find answers or stop questioning. And it's as Mm. simple as that. And I think in um, the modern world, we've got so many distractions and we've spread ourselves so incredibly thin and we've got all of this technology around us and all of these thoughts going through our head. And so when people sit down to quote what they think is meditate and all these thoughts are running through their head, of course, they're going to say, this is awful. I'm I'm thinking even more than ever. I don't want to do this. And so um, I was trained in Osho's style of meditation, which is dynamic meditation. And it's all about movement and preparing the body for meditation. And actually, that's what yoga is to do. All of the, all of the asanas that um, yoga is to prepare the body for meditation. 
And, um, in that last five minutes, when you take a yoga class of Shavasana for your meditation, that's just scratching the surface. If that could be stretched out to 15, 20, 30 minutes, that's when the magic starts to happen because your body has been settled. You don't have all of those twitches and I've got to get up and move and what's going on with that feeling. Um, so doing some physical activity before you meditate can help you get to a calmer place with your body and the mind follows. Okay. I have totally noticed that. See, like I try to meditate first thing in the morning so that law of attraction doesn't kind of like get started on something like I, I, because I I listen to Abraham all the time and they're always talking about do it first thing in the morning because first thing in the morning is when, you know, you have the least amount of momentum going on other thoughts so you can kind of get, get a clear mind. But what I've noticed is that when I actually like get moving or take a walk or do some other things in the morning, it it feels like then my mind can be settled quicker when Mm -hmm. I sit down after that. Yes. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic. Yes. And also, um, (laughs) do you know what ecstatic dance is? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So when I was at the retreat that I've mentioned here now a few times, um, with Sonia Sophia, in Austin, like a month and a half ago, that was something that I was introduced to, which I'd never really heard of or knew about. Like, um, and, and what it is, if you're listening and don't know what it is, it's like a free form, uh, dance, but it's also kind of like a moving meditation in a way, because you're kind of like just losing yourself in the dance and you're just like letting your body go. Mm -hmm. Um, and (laughs) <laughs> it's just funny because I've been getting this nudge since I've been back from the retreat. Like every couple of days I get the little tap on the shoulder. It's like, yeah, you, you should really be ecstatic dancing. You should really, you should really be doing that. You should be doing that. And I know there's a group in Philadelphia um, where I live and, and I keep getting the tap. You really got to do this. You really got to do this. And so then a couple of days ago I got the tap again and I ignored it. <laughs> and then I got a message on Facebook from the, the the leader of, like the um the head of the ecstatic dance group in Philly saying hey we want you to come dance with us and i was like what <laughs> <That's> <laughs> because <awesome. laughs> because yeah well so anyway i was like okay i get it i get it universe like i got it like this is not an option like i'm supposed to go do this so tonight is my partner's birthday and somehow i convinced him <laughs> to come with me um on his birthday to go <laughs> ecstatic dancing. So um, we're, we're going to do that tonight. And I just, I don't know, when you were talking about yoga and movement and, and all of that, it just got me thinking about ecstatic dance. So I thought that I'd drop so that in cool. there. Yes. And my husband's birthday was last night, by the way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, oh yeah, Taurus. I'm a Taurus girl, so. Oh, nice. Yep. What are you? What's your Virgo. sign? 918 Virgo. Oh my gosh. That makes sense why we get along. I get along really well with yeah. Virgos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with that ecstatic dancing. So Osho, yeah. has, um, if you go on YouTube, you can find videos of the Nataraj dance, which is mm. 15 minutes of shaking. So you shake everything out and loosen your body up first. And then you enter into that ecstatic dance And then there's 15 minutes of silence afterward that um, is so profound, that meditation Uh, after those movements. So if you want to try it at home, if you don't have a big city that you're living in that offers that service, you can just find a video um, of it on YouTube and participate in the privacy of your own home. There you go. Thank you for that. That's awesome. I'm going to check that out, actually. Yeah, the shaking is like... um, you know, it's really, it it reminds me of like tapping, you know, it's like, um, I was just listening to something today about how animals, um, shake off their traumas, you know, after they get stressed or anything and immediately they just shake it off. And that's why dogs are always like every, like my dog, every time she gets up, she goes, like she shakes and then she stretches, she does her like poses. Mm -hmm. Um, I was listening to someone today talk about, you know, how like if an animal almost gets killed, it, it immediately shakes off that trauma and then it's gone and then it 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 just carries on with its life. Um, and so the shaking of the body is like a really interesting way to uh, de-stress, right? Because it's a big yeah. part of Qigong, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep, it sure is. Yep, we do yep. that in my workshops. <laughs> do you? We do. do. And I talk about the animals. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Yes. That's 
<laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, like Qigong and um, what about bringing tapping into those workshops? I would love that. I think that would definitely be like a level two. So let's yeah. warm everybody up to the okay. woo and now, okay. let's, now let's do some tapping. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hear, or I think like Sonia, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Sonia was being called into places like, I don't know, some corporate places like Apple and like all kinds of places are starting to do that now. So yeah, they are definitely yeah. on the cutting edge and it always takes a few years for other organizations yes. to start to follow. But yeah, that is true. Yeah, we're definitely watching them out there in Silicon Valley. <laughs> that is very true. Good point. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have any uh, like fun or inspiring manifestation stories you'd like to share? I do. And actually, it's how you and I first connected. Uh, <laughs> it is. So going back to when we, uh, before we bought the, the land here in South Carolina, when we uh, came through these country back roads, there was these beautiful rolling green hills and cows and horses. And it just, it, it's such a magical place. And we pulled up on the property and immediately I, I had that intuitive feeling of, something big is going to happen here. We're, we're going to have some spiritual gatherings or something big is going to happen here. And, um, and this was uh, right around the same time that I had um, discovered the podcast that I reached out to Brandon and, and said, let me introduce you to Rasha. And by the way, we've got some sort of connection here. I don't know what it is because I was having that feeling that the PHA community was going to end up here on this land. I just, I had mm. this feeling and so talk about getting messages, just like you were getting nudged for the ecstatic dancing. Um, suddenly I'm, I'm listening to Brandon. He said, I, I had somebody had um, reach out to me and say, why don't we have more events in the South? And it was like the flag went up and I said, Oh, well, we could have an event here in the South in South Carolina. And then when you started the P head posse interviews, we kept hearing, we want to get together how can we expand? Let's get together. We want an in-person event. So it was like, yeah. okay, Molly, go, go, go. And so I'm, I'm thinking about the land and I'm like, you know, it's really like summer camp here. Like we, we could do some powwows and we've got river on the property where we could do um, canoe rides and, you know, cheesy summer camp stuff. And then <laughs> Alexa does this interview and I'm, I can't remember who it was with, but you started talking about this vision of summer camp and it was like, <laughs> I wasn't being pushed anymore. It was like shoved, like reach out to her right now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I reached love out that. to you on Facebook and I'm like, two words, summer camp. <laughs> and you and I talked and talk about our connection. I mean, I, I still get chills thinking about it, but our energy was just it so was- intertwined talking about all the things that we could do for... Um, either a pea head event here or some sort some sort of other event where we have that gathering down here on the land. It just um, it's meant to be. Yes, it was. Whoa, something just took my voice away. Um, <clears throat> it was totally it was totally crazy talking to you when you messaged me. I told you I was like I've never. I don't know what it was because it was like undescri- it was indescribable. But I was like I am never I I I met like a loss for words, and I'm not really sure why. But I don't really know what to say to you <laughs> because I'm just feeling so much. But also like there was just like waves of energy going through my body when you first messaged me, and I was like, wow, this is really crazy. Like that never happens to me. So yeah, it was definitely um, meant to be, and definitely a synchronistic. Um, match up and I'm just I'm so happy you reached out and yeah we you know the peahead event is yet to happen but it will happen I know it's gonna happen I don't know when it's gonna happen but it will happen and you know hopefully eventually we'll be able to do one of those events or the event or whatever on um your amazing farm which you've (laughs) facetimed a Marley FaceTimed me from the farm and I was just ta- my breath was taken away because it's just the most beautiful, peaceful, green space with these blue open skies and um just it just it just is really magical. So I'm really looking forward to doing something there, whatever it is. Um but yeah, that was that was I'm yeah. I honestly you guys the the way I truly feel like me doing this segment, like this show segment has been 
synchronistic all the way around because everyone that I've met, it's like I've formed some relationship with them offline and I realize like, oh, I'm supposed to meet this person. And it's especially the people that were like pushed to reach out to me, like you were saying, like you felt pushed and, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple other people. It's like, I feel like I was supposed to do this segment so that I could like meet and have these in-depth combos with these people I was supposed to meet. And so I am just so blessed and so happy that we connected um and just 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 so thankful for the opportunity to be a part of this show um at all because it, again it's been such a big influence on my life um and yeah i'm just really grateful um okay so <laughs> um, <laughs> you second that <laughs> that was yes. Thank you, Brandon, for creating yes. this beautiful community for us all to find each other. Yes, it's so it's it's truly um, yesterday, actually, like this week. So another guest that I had on the show um, on on the segment that I was doing, uh, Ambie, who you guys probably know, cause she's been doing some live readings in the group and, and some stuff. Um, she and I have been talking a lot and realizing how much like talking to someone who who is excited about this stuff and is like not only like is encouraging of it and is believing in it. It just takes you higher and higher. Like this group of people, it's like, if you really like engage in these conversations and really like support each other's ideas, I just can feel us going higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's like, it almost doesn't matter like who doesn't believe or, you know, who's doubting or whatever. It's like when I first joined this group and when I first started listening to this podcast, I remember feeling the need. It was like, I wanted everyone who wasn't interested in this to be interested in it and to know about it and I felt this need to justify it like listen to this like are you listening like come on like let's go you know and now I'm like oh like this is this is it right here like we're we're together so that we can help each other elevate and grow and expand and we can get our momentum going more and more and more so that it doesn't even matter it doesn't even matter who believes and who doesn't believe because like we are in our power that is like the most important thing is that we stay focused on what we believe, where we're going, what we know is best. And then everything else will fall into place. It's like, I, what I'm saying is I've just been recognizing recently how much time I've spent trying to get people who like aren't inherently interested in this or aren't ready yet to, to be into this. And really the people that I, should have been talking to or should be talking about this with are right here. We're all right here. Like we have each other right here. And this is like the most valuable thing, at least for me, because I'm realizing this group of people is what I need to get my momentum going and get into like my power. And, and when I focus on that, everything else just comes into alignment for me. So Mm. I just went on a rampage of appreciation about this group, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say is I just, I appreciate this group and I'm like seeing even new ways to, to, to support each other and to lift each other up and to just amplify each other's gifts, you know, like, um, uh, and to learn from each other. The other day I, I got this memory, um, that I used to do this thing called cloud bursting, which is something that I'd heard about like two years ago on a podcast and thought it was bogus. And then I tried it and it worked where you basically look at a cloud in the sky and you make an intention that that cloud dissolve. And it does in about three minutes. It's pretty yeah. wild. That was and cool. Yeah. And I've taken videos of them. And, and, and when I first started doing it, I was showing it to all these people who wouldn't even believe it, even when I showed it to them in a video. They wouldn't even believe it. And, that, that. <laughs> yeah. and then a couple, and then, you know, like a couple years go by or whatever. And I was talking to Ambi, who I was just talking about, and somehow it came up. And I was like, oh, wait, I should share this with Positive Head because, like, they would like it. Like, they'd think this was cool. So I shared it. And it was the most amazing thing because, Not only were people are like, yeah, this is awesome, but almost everybody who commented, which was like several people said they tried it immediately and did it on their first try. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like we can 
like we all have, you know, things to teach each other and like to learn. And this is like a little school here. Like we can use it that way too. Like a little like Hogwarts. Like it's just, ah, it sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Marley. <laughs> and I think, I think we all have that inner recruiter in us that we've discovered this magical yes. group and, and we're learning and healing and growing. And we want everybody in our circle of influence to be there with us. Yeah. And I've, I've experienced the same thing. You get, you get the pushback or you send a podcast to somebody and you're like, I think this will help you in, in your time of need right now. And they probably never listen to it. And so I think the best thing that we can do is just continue to elevate ourselves and, and live our own example and be the example. And then people will start to come forward. I, I want that. I like that. How did you get to be so positive and upbeat? Oh, tell me more about this positive head. And exactly. you know, that's, that's how we can become the recruiter. But the other way around, I think people get kind of turned off by it or, or they're just not ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're holding them in a place of not being ready because we see them as not being ready. That's why we're trying to convince them, exactly. you know, yeah. <laughs> totally. It's like a totally backwards cyclical thing. And it's, and it's just amazing to know that. Yeah, exactly what you said. It's like the best thing we can do is stand in our power and, and develop our strength and our light. And then everything else will, will follow suit. And, and that's what's happening. So Oh, I'm just so happy to be connected to all of you guys and um, Marley, specifically you as well. <laughs> and um, we I just have, all. <laughs> yes. Um, well, first of all, before we get to like our last question, <clears throat> is there anything else that you feel rel? Oh, wait, I wanted to ask you about, I wanted to ask you to share a little bit about like what your kids um, have been saying. <laughs> My magic little boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I was sharing with Alexa how, how magic our kids are, and especially our four-year-old Osiris. He um, is such a beautiful being and such a teacher for my husband and I. Talk about triggers and things that we can learn from. Um, <laughs> but the, um, the the first time I gave him Reiki, so there's a couple of things. The first time I gave him Reiki, he was three years old, and he opened his eyes and he said, "Oh, wow! Look, mom, look! It's a beautiful angel." I said, where? Wow. And he said, right there. And, you know, pointing over my shoulder. Wow, she's so beautiful. And, you know, closed his eyes and just enjoyed the rest of the Reiki. And <laughs> um, there's been so many moments that have unfolded since then. So he uh, shortly after that, he said, Mom, when I wake up, I tell myself I'm happy. And then I'm happy. <laughs> and that's that. It just was so oh, matter of fact. You know, it's so profound. Yes. And, um one night we were giving him his bedtime story and, and he said, shh, what is that? And we said, it's just the wind, buddy. And he said, no, listen. And he, he goes, it says, you just got to love. The wind says, you just got to love. <laughs> and then this is the last one I just shared with you before we started recording um, the other night. We always watch the sunset um, from our, our back windows and um and he always comes over and comments on how beautiful it is and we missed it the other night and we saw the first star rise and he said oh look look at the beautiful star mom and then he goes oh he's talking to me <laughs> and so I, I played along oh he is what's he saying and he says no oh, he just wants to say hi and that he loves me and now he's got to say bye because he's only going to be here for this much longer. And he holds up three fingers. And I'm like, oh, yeah, why is that? Where's he going? And he said, well, he's got other star friends up there, but he wants to go dance and play. And, and he's got to go do that. <laughs> did he mean three? What did he mean when he held up the three? No, if he meant three years. I'm like, is that three years or three minutes? Like, what's going on? What, yeah. What's he seeing right now? <laughs> Yes, I love that. So beautiful and just so deep. He's he's a beautiful yeah. child. <laughs> you know, you know, you're bringing up for me that that children have this way of like. I feel like the biggest thing that children can teach us in general is that you don't have to use a lot of words to be authentic and deep and profound, mm -hmm. like. It seems like children are kind of like you said, they're so matter of fact, right? Mm -hmm. That that it it 
it's so tr- it feels so true because there's not I feel like adults we we like to use a lot of words because we're scared we're not going to get it right when we're talking so we kind of are I mean I'm doing it right now it's like we're ju- we're justifying all over the place we're adding a lot of words so that we can capture someone's attention maybe or they'll feel like we're getting them right but children they don't really have that they're just kind of like this is what it is and it's so simple and so beautiful and it resonates so deeply that simple truth mm-hmm. and i just from what you're saying what i'm learning just in this moment is like simple truths are are profound like just a simple truth yeah. like we don't you know we don't need we don't need all the words like to just say what our truth is yes so if you're a parent, take time to listen to what your children have to say. They've, they've got so much to offer. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, just a little bit more on that. Um, what are, you know, when you said that you're, you um, practice conscious parenting, what, what does that look like exactly? <laughs> it is all about presence for us. So um, we're not on our phones a lot. We are very engaged with what they're interested in. We don't push them with our own agenda. You know, we're not all, you're four years old. We better sign you up for T-ball. It's, oh, you like to dance? Okay, there's there's no males in the dance classes down here in South Carolina, but we could we could explore that. Why not? You could be the first. And, mm, um, yeah. and especially around punishment and discipline. So we, we talk about this a lot. It's almost a daily conversation in our house of how does, what does that look like? And just paying attention to how our words affect them and what they respond to versus just getting upset and yelling at them and sending them to their room. And so it's, we call it our beautiful experiment. So we're just, you know, it's Mm. an experiment. We don't know what's going to mess them up and what they're going to end up in therapy for down the road. But we do know if we stay present in how we're interacting with them, that um, that's the best way for them to live their lives and for us to live ours. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. That's I'm I'm really um yeah, I'm really interested to see how that experiment goes because it feels like a really feels like a really awesome new new edition of parenting. So, thank you. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for for stepping out. <laughs> um so, okay, final question. Do you have an intention for 2018? Mm. So I was pregnant at the beginning of 2018, and my mm. big intention for the year was surrender. Um, I wanted to have a natural childbirth at home, and so my big focus was I've got to surrender. I've got to surrender to my ego. I've got to surrender to any fear. I've got to surrender to any physical feelings that I'm having and so on um, March 3rd, we had our third son naturally at home in the bathtub. So that surrender wow. was a success. And so the Congrats. surrender continues of just surrendering to all of the possibilities and um, surrendering, staying open. Um, my daily mantra for several years has been to give love and to seek light. And so I, I have to remember to surrender to that even so that I continue to do so. Mm, that's all just so y- yummy. <laughs> that's just so great. All, all of that. I, and, I mean, congrats on doing the natural birth at home. How was that? Ooh, it was insane. <laughs> Beautiful. So my first two were 40 hour labors in the hospital, epidurals, all the drugs, all the drugs. And so I I was very afraid, how am I ever going to do this? But again, this podcast, I'm telling you, it saved my life. I took a lot of the lessons and was able to, to surrender easily. And, you know, we walked outside barefoot to ground ourselves right before it was time to get into the tub. And there was really no pain um, until that moment of transition. But even in that moment of transition, I was yelling, surrender. (laughs) (laughs) This is not about you. Surrender. (laughs) And um, and he came into the world so peaceful. We named him Pike um, after the Irish fish uh, because he's a water baby. And we were in Ireland when um, we conceived. (laughs) Oh, um, that's so sweet. He wasn't crying. It almost scared me because he was just so peaceful. And I asked the midwives, what's wrong with him? And they said, nothing. He's perfect. 
<laughs> so, it's all very peaceful and beautiful. This is normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah. Well, I'll have to ask you more about that later because I'm okay. actually really interested in that. <laughs> but Marley, thank you so much for um, taking the time to do this and share your story with us and, and all of your insights. Um, I learned a lot and I'm, I'm sure the listeners did too. How can people um, reach out to you or do you, do you have a website um, for your consulting company? Yeah, or yeah anything I'm, I'm on want? Facebook. I'm in the group and I try to comment as much as I can, uh, as much as I can get on Facebook. Um, so it's Marley Fuller there on Facebook. And then my website is fullermethods.com. Um, and my email and all my contact information is on the website. So I'd love to hear from you all. Um, and thank you for having me on. I love you all so much. That's it for this week's episode. If you're a listener with a story to share and are interested in being featured on a future episode of this special series, you can email me at alexa at positivehead.com. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear Brandon constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place we know of to do it period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash positive head. Check it out. Otherwise, tune in next Friday for another P-Head Posse episode. And until then, as Brandon always says, journey well.